Hi friends, I hope your day is treating you well and hopefully it's not too noisy and I'm not huffing and puffing here. Excuse the all natural look here. I'm on a walk and I thought it'd be fun to just update you on my reading. So I have been continuing on with my um, buddy reads and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But my last three finishes I wanted to talk about and the first one is The Second Chance of Benjamin Waterfalls, and this is by James Bird. And this is a coming of age story, and I really have appreciated the two books I've read by Mr. Bird. These are just heart wrenching looks, looks, and I feel like they're honest looks at disability, abandonment, alcoholism. Um, just a whole bunch of hard topics, but I feel like he does it so well, mi mixing the kind of, it's a big, a big away, um, magic realism into the story, and he does the character's inner monologue so well and so honestly. Um, Benjamin Waterfalls is a story about a boy who is abandoned by his father um, and he's caught stealing and he's headed to juvie and his mother agrees with the judge to send him to kind of some kind of rehabilitation program with his father and he is dealing with extreme resent and anger toward his father and he gets to his father's house and it's just so interesting. Mr. Bird writes very um, hopeful. They're dark, but hopeful. And so I really, really enjoyed this. This was definitely quieter than The Brave, which I really liked too, but that one was extremely hard as well. Um, that dealt with like childhood illness and a whole bunch of stuff. I would say that the one downside for me is um, there's just a tiny bit of things that don't ring quite true to me. They're a little token kind of just dropped in there for the sake of being there but generally I really appreciate his way that he writes kind of like about circumstances outside of us and also our choices and I think they're just really well done I will disagree with the label of middle grade because I really think these are older teen or adult books they're just so heavy and they deal with some topics that I don't really think are necessarily good for younger children just a lot of religion and choices and so I don't know I'm not sure the middle grade for me is the right um, label but I highly recommend his writing I used this as my vegetable prompt for the Thanksgiving read-along because it has a very colorful cover and I'll put a little picture here so if you're up for a little bit of a challenge and you know um, some of this um, that raises questions and makes you think I definitely recommend him he is one other book that recently just came out and I believe it's about homelessness and with children and I think I will save it for a little later as I contemplate um, Benjamin Waterfalls but I was thinking about why I like a little bit of darkness I'm really a comfort reader I like cozy domestic type reading but I do like a little bit of darkness in my stories and I was like why is that and I think it has to do with um, that as a Christian the light sh shines brighter as we look into the face of darkness and there is an Amy Carmichael line that I read from some of her poetry and it was talking about how we will wait for the shadows to be enfolded by his light and I just think that there's something about challenging the darkness and seeing a hopefulness. Um, so sometimes stories that have an element of darkness but they have hope in them just help me face all the chaos in the world and give me hope. So, Because I didn't understand that about myself, so I was thinking about it. So the second book I read that I finished was a manga and this is by Andrew Andy Weir and I just happened to see it on my Libby app and it was very weird it was called Cheshire Crossing and it was a mashup of Wendy and um, Neverland uh, Alice and where did she go 
I don't know, Wonderland, and then um, Dorothy and Oz. So the illustrations were okay. It was different. It was very different. The plot was a little convoluted and it was a definitely adult. So it was okay. So uh, just kind of finding lighter things between all my big buddy reads. So then I read, last but not least, I read, finally found a cozy mystery that I sort of really enjoyed and that was Assaulted Caramel. It was the first in the Amish candy shop. Uh, mysteries. I think it's by Amanda Flower. And this one, I really liked that Bailey was kind of questioning some of her life choices. Um, whether she came to the right conclusion or not remains to be seen through the series. But um, she has to go, of course, back to her hometown. And she, her father, was an ex Amish. So she's, you know, the grandchild of an Amish couple. And they have a little sweet shop and her grandfather is sick. So she offers to go and help to, um, because she's a chocolatier. So it was, you know, a cute mystery. There's a sheriff love interest, which is kind of fun. And, but I especially loved her realizing that a lot of her life was a lie. And I thought that was kind of a little deeper than you get in some, some cozy mysteries. Um, so, for overall, I enjoyed it. There were some goofy parts that, you know, kind of come with cozy mysteries, like strange animal pets, like a, a pig. But I definitely want to try the next one, which is called Lethal Licorice, which I think is hilarious. So those are the three books I finished. Now, I've been working on the Ma Makioka Sisters with my friend, and we are really enjoying just kind of soaking in that one it's so quiet but we did get some action here <laughs> halfway almost halfway through or so and but it's just really fascinating getting kind of an in-depth look in to these Japanese families uh, close to the beginning of World War II and I'm actually really enjoying it I wasn't so sure at first um, because I think I was holding my breath or something for there to be some kind of dark twist or something. I don't know, or or kind of this distance from the characters, which I've had happen sometimes in some of the Japanese literature I've read. But I'm really starting to care for the characters and I'm interested in them. And so I guess that's one thing you get with like a 500 page book where you have enough time to get to know the characters and appreciate them. So. Um, and then I'm slowly working on Dombey and Son. I really haven't read much more since um, since uh, a couple weeks, like last week I read some. So I need to keep moving on that. I would really like to be at least halfway done with that by the end of November because it's close to, I think it's like 800 pages long or something. So, But I'm liking that too when I read it. So, And then today we started our next Charlotte Mary Young and that's Countess Kate. And the first chapter was lovely, so I'm excited about that. I've only read one thing for Nonfiction November, but that's okay. I'm slowly plugging away at a few other things, but I don't know if I'll end up reading anything from more Montgomery because I ended up DNFing looking, um, looking for Anne of Green Gables by Irene Gamble, I think. It was so, like, I don't know, I had, like, a gossipy, like searching for um, juicy gossip tone to it that I wasn't loving that. The information was really fascinating, but it was kind of like dark and like digging in her, what the author felt was like was Montgomery's psychological state of mind, which I don't know. I wasn't sure I really wanted to know that. You know, you have favorite authors or artists and do you need to know every little detail about their lives to appreciate their art no <laughs> so montgomery is my favorite i know quite a bit about her past and some of her life you know it wasn't the greatest it was kind of dark life but i don't know how much i need to know about that like for instance van gogh i mean i love van gogh do i need to know every deep dark secret of van gogh's no <laughs> i can still enjoy his art and then i dnf'd Jane and the 12 Days of Christmas, which was a Stephanie Barron. It's a Jane Austen mystery. It was actually really good. I liked it. It's a closed door mystery at a manor, 
but it really slowed down in the middle. It was just dragging. And maybe that's, you know, Jane doesn't get to travel around much. You know, she's kind of trapped, cloistered, you know, because of the time and everything. But I don't know. I just wasn't ready for it. And then I think I'm giving up on Heather Foster because I, or Fawcett. I really liked Grace of the Wild Things. I sort of liked um, The Enchantment of Fairies. I love her writing style, but I just, there was some things about her books that I was just disappointed in and it like made me lose steam. So that's okay. Um, I'm trying to think what else I DNF'd. There was quite a bit, but I don't remember. So I just wanted to check in. I apologize for the huffing and puffing, but it is what it is. And I hope your guys' reading is going really well. And yeah. So have a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.